Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how to composite CG objects into a photo using an HDRI projection workflow for lighting. If you follow the FSPY and Maya tutorial, we're going to continue to work on the same scene. So in Maya let me show you the scene setup. This is the room geometry we created in the FSPY and Maya tutorial. Here I have the asset with a basic animation, just to see the effect of the light across the scene. If I look into the outliner, I duplicated the scene camera to use it as a projection camera in the shading network that you can see in the hypershade. Let's recreate the setup, creating a file node as a projection and loading the HDR image. In order to see the projection in the viewport, I'm going to use a surface shader. Now we need to change the projection type to perspective and choose the target camera. Let's also disable the repetition of the texture in the place to the, to the node. But as you can see, we have this 50% grey color in the areas out of the projection. To fix that, just set a similar color to the walls on the default color of the projection node and we should be good to go. So we can play with the exposure slider to see the range we have in the HDR. And if I compare it to the JPEG version you can see the difference with a limited dynamic range compared to the 32-bit EXR file. In the original projection I used an AI utility instead and added an exposure adjustment to have more bounce light. Ideally you would have a color chart reference to color correct the backplate and HDRI. One thing we need to do is to disable the visibility in the render stats of the geometry receiving the projection. This is just the shader setup for the asset, just connected all the textures. If I do a render you can start to see the effect that the HDRI projection has on the asset, lighting it up where the sun is hitting the floor. Since we don't have the sun shape visible in, a, in our HDRI, we need to create one. In this case I'm going to use a simple directional light with some exposure added. I also want to add a bounce light to fill the objects, here I use the area light. Now we need to have some geometry to receive the shadow from the directional light, so for that I created a simple plane with the shadow matte shader. I kept most of the default settings for the shader, if we assign it to the plane and do a render you can now see the shadow added. Since I wanted some contact shadows, I created this simple shading setup with a mixed shader, layering the shadow matte material with a black standard material, mixing them with uh, an ambient occlusion shader. This is the easiest way to add ambient occlusion on top of your materials, without extra passes. One problem we have is that the directional light acting as the sun in our scene is also lighting parts we don't want, like the wall between the window and the door openings. So to avoid that I created some proxy geo with the openings of the window and door to cast shadows on the asset. Just make sure you disable its visibility in the render stats. And if we do a render, we do have the desired result on the asset, receiving the shadow from the wall proxy geo. And in the openings, we get the light showing in the asset. The problem now is that we created a shadow from the wall on the floor, and we just want it in the asset. I didn't find a perfect solution for this, so what I ended up doing was to render in different passes. We could use render layers for this, but to keep it simple we'll just be rendering in passes from different scenes. 
So in this first one, basically I disabled the primary visibility on all the geo, but the asset. Finally, just do a sequence render or a batch render. Then in Nuke, open up the sequence and make sure you set the correct color space, in this case, Aces. We're also going to need to the backplate since we disabled it in Maya to render the asset on its own. In this scene I disabled everything but the floor where it's receiving the shadows of the asset in the alpha channel. For this you need to enable the matte attribute for the asset. Then just render out the sequence. In Nuke we can load the images and use it as a mask in a grey node to create the shadows. This way you have full control on the shadow opacity. Here is the slab comp I put together. I also rendered an ambient occlusion pass. Added some gain to the asset render with a grade node and multiply the occlusion on top. Finally, just added a reformat to set it to a common resolution. And here is the final result. Just a quick setup to show you the potential of projected HDRIs on your scenes. One problem we still have is that the shadow from the sun is still present on the parts of the wall that don't have openings like the window and the door. You could always add a blur to the shadow and set some keyframes along the timeline. Even using the grade node you could animate the opacity to create a more plausible effect for the shadow. Again, not a perfect setup, but wanted to share this with you guys. Hopefully you picked up some tips. So that's it, let me know if you have any solutions for the shadow issue and if you enjoyed this video. Thank you and bye bye.